Think Realty Nation, what's up? It's your host, Avi Golhar. Welcome to the Think Realty Podcast. Today, we have a great lineup. We have a lot of awesome, awesome topics we're talking about today. First and foremost, uh, doing a little um, price breakdown of what's going on in Denver, da- Dallas, Austin, and Nashville, and how some of these homes have started to exceed their pre-recession peak in terms of sales prices. So excited uh, to have that conversation with you. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about mortgage notes today and what you need to know to buy, potentially sell, and just hold those in your portfolio. Talking about the ideal retirement plan. That's going to be a great topic. We'll also uh, do a review on my good friend Eddie Wilson's book called Time, Wealth, and Purpose. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, how to fulfill your life goals through real estate investing. The last but not least topic. You've heard about those roofs that require solar panels in California? Well, I'll tell you something. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? That's what's coming up on Think Realty Podcast. This podcast today is brought to you by Renner's Warehouse, one of the largest and fastest growing, highest reviewed property management companies in America. All right, let's get started with our market review. Whenever I got statistics, I usually have my highlighter somewhere, but I don't have it today. Instead, I've got the statistics right here on my piece of paper. Prices in Austin, Denver, Dallas, Nashville are 50%. They're over 50% uh, their pre-recession peaks. Uh, quote, medium ho- median home prices in 73 of the 123 metro areas analyzed were above pre-recession peaks in the first quarter of 2019. And that's led by Greeley, Colorado, which is 79% above the pre-recession peak. Denver, Colorado, 68% above the pre-recession peak. Then we got Fort Collins, Colorado, 67% above. Austin, Texas, 62% above. And Dallas sitting at 58% above the pre-recession peak. So what does this mean for real estate investors? If you boil all this down, be a little more cautious. You know, you don't have to pay a premium necessarily to buy that long-term single-family rental. You don't have to pay a premium to buy that flip deal. Really, what you got to do is pay attention to what you're buying and make sure you buy it right. Otherwise, it's not going to be pretty. All right, let's get to my guest. His name's Bill Mancaro. He's from thepapersourceonline.com. There's one resource that I go to whenever I need just that little edge on, you know, and that push to keep buying notes. I go to Bill. Think Realty Nation, my guest today is Bill Mancaro, and when we think about buying, selling, investing in notes, I think about Bill. And I think about the success that he's had over the many, many, many years that he's been investing as a real estate investor. Uh, He has a tremendous amount of experience in notes, and quite frankly, it's one of those tools that I highly suggest you taking a look at. Uh, You might be a flipper, uh, you might be somebody that invests in single family rentals, you might be somebody that likes your new construction uh, single family builds as well, and believe me, I used to be that guy. Uh, Not so much anymore, don't get me wrong, I still like my single family rentals, and you know, Bill will probably chastise me uh, in, in just a second about owning single family rentals. And he'll say, well, you should just own the paper because you don't have to deal with anything. I mean, it's just better and faster and easier to make money. And he'll say that, which I'm excited to because the more I hear it from him, um, the more that I know that I'm on the right track with investing in notes. So without any further ado, uh, Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate that. Hey, you got it. Tell, Give us a... Yeah, but it's true, right? Like we've done radio shows before. I've had you on and you're like, Avi, you need to buy more notes. So uh, that being said, give us a little rundown of who you are and what you do. Okay. Uh, well, as, as you said in your very kind introduction, I'm Bill Mancaro. Uh, I publish a uh, newsletter called the Paper Source Journal uh, since 1987. Can't believe we're still doing that, but we are. <laughs> uh, and uh, my wife and I started it back, way back when, when we... Uh, We had just left Capitol Hill as congressional staffers, and uh, that's how we met, and uh, decided to get into something different. We've been there a lot, many years, and uh, decided to get into something different. Uh, And we have evolved into, we not only publish the monthly uh, paper source journal, which is 12, 14, 16 pages a month of information on how to find notes, uh, what to do with them, how to negotiate uh, the purchase, you know, how to increase your yields after you buy them, uh, court decisions, new laws affecting note investors, so this kind of thing. And we also have uh, occasional seminars. We have an annual convention and usually one or two uh, note seminars per year. Uh, 
uh, and we're papersourceonline.com if anyone's interested in uh, taking a look at our website. And, you have, and, and these events too are very well attended. Um, and one of the things that if you're looking at becoming a node investor, you want to get educated. And so going to the paper source uh, seminars, it's really important. You have, do you have a different website for the paper source seminars? We do. It's called okay. papersourceseminars.com. Hey, papersourceseminars.com, all one word. Nice and yeah. easy. Uh, so th a, a, there's been a lot of discussion about retirement lately, especially for real estate investors, business owners, entrepreneurs. They're doing well uh, right now. It's an easy market to make money in real estate. Uh, but as, uh, as we've seen over the last year, year and a half, Inventory has been a major issue. Uh, the cost of labor has been a major issue. The timelines to get these deals done has, have been a major issue. The cost of materials has been increasing. That's again an issue. So what does that mean in terms of the overall profit margin for the flipper, for the new construction guy or gal out there that's really working hard to make, it, uh, to make a living? What that means is your profit margins used to be here. And now they're here, <laughs> and so that's a major problem. And so everybody's looking for that next thing. Everybody's thinking, okay, well, geez, maybe I have to go buy uh, single-family rentals and outfit them for Airbnb. Uh, but you'll step in, and, and uh, we had, again, multiple conversations about this, and you're like, Abby, the answer is simple. It's been staring at you in the conversations that we've been having on radio all the time, and that's notes. Uh, help me understand what you mean by the ideal retirement plan buying notes. Well, I think notes can certainly produce what you call the ideal retirement plan. Uh, and, you know, we've been working on this a long time uh, and kind of come up. I won't take credit for it. Other people, I'm sure, know about it as well. But we've put together an idea. And I, by the way, we don't sell anything like this. It's, we're not in the business of selling retirement plans. It's an idea. It's a suggestion that I want people to take a look at. Uh, but it, uh, it exists with as little as one contribution uh, from you, the investor. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to set it up with a brokerage firm. You don't have any fees involved. You're totally in control. You have no government restrictions, no laws that regulate it, uh, very little paperwork, and uh, you can take out funds no matter what your age. Uh, and uh, I can explain the all, details. All of it. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. What is a note? For those of us uh, that are listening for the first time, they're watching for the first time, they're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm used to buy, renovate, and sell, or buy and do a little renovation and, and then hold um, and, and rent. What? Di dive, it, dive it down for me. Break it down for me all together. Let's start from the basics. What is a note? Well, a note is an IOU. When someone sells a house, uh, the buyer goes to a bank and signs a note or an IOU or mortgage or trust deed, you know, a lot of terms for it, uh, generally speaking. And uh, if the seller of the house sells it with owner financing or seller financing, terms most people are familiar with, uh, a note is created uh, just like a bank. And the, the difference is the buyer of the real estate does not go to the bank or commercial lender. The he, the, he signs a note payable to the seller of the house and the seller of the house then becomes the bank and receives the monthly payments. And that is, that is secured by the house. So it's a note secured by the house as collateral. So if the, if the buyer of the house stops paying for some reason, uh, the seller can renegotiate, he can foreclose, you know, he's got several options in that case. And those notes are marketable. The owner of the house who sold the, the seller of the house who took back the note through seller financing can sell that note to an investor. Are there, yeah. are there any circumstances under which these notes cannot be sold or, or remarketed for sale? Uh, there, there would be some if, if they weren't secured by the property for one thing. Yes. Uh, if the, you know, that would be a, a very difficult note to market because you've got no collateral, um, you know, notes with very short term balloons, you know, Pay me, pay for six months or a year, and then the, the note balloons for the full amount due. Very difficult to to sell something like that. Uh, and and why is that? Just out of curiosity, is it just because of the loan terms that not a lot of buyers and not a lot of lenders would be interested in picking that up because of just the short turnaround time? Well, the the fear is, is the balloon will not be paid. Yes. And so you, uh, the investor is going to look at that and say, I'm going to assume the balloon will not be paid because it's such a short term balloon. So I'm going to pretend as though this is a longer term note and 
make an offer for it accordingly because I'm going to have to extend this note anyway, I'm sure. If, it, if the balloon does pay off, it's a windfall. And yes. that's happened to us a, a few times. That's happened to us. But you, you look at it as, a, as the balloon's not going to pay off. So let's look at this as a longer term note and, and as I said, price it accordingly. When it comes to retirement planning, there are a lot of folks that will have, say, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs in their 401k portfolio, right? That's what we're taught to do growing up, and that's just kind of what we do, right? We'll, we'll say, all right, I'm working for this big name company. Let me start a 401k and identify like a 2050 target fund or something. The challenge with that, well, there are a number of challenges with that, but the number one is you're only in equities. Then folks will say, okay, well, let me flip a house or let me go lend money to somebody that's flipping a house. What percentage of your portfolio would you say should be in notes? It depends on what your goals are. Uh, remember that notes are for cash flow. Mm -hmm. Real estate is for future appreciation primarily. You can get cash flow from real estate, certainly. Uh, and you can get cash flow by flipping real estate. But if you're a buy and hold person, uh, most of your profit is going to come when you sell the property and hopefully you have appreciation. Notes don't appreciate. Uh, That's right. notes, are, notes are like bonds, so they pay off. And so if you're looking for long-term cash flow, the more you're looking for long-term cash flow, the more you're Assets should be in notes. Uh, if you're looking to establish uh, a, a, have a longer term perspective, uh, looking to leave something for your children, uh, then certainly real estate would, would be uh, uh, weight, weighted more in your portfolio. So it's not necessarily one or the other. It could be a good combination of both, right? Because like you said, notes, you don't get the appreciation. In the real estate, you do. And there are pros and cons, of course, to both. In real estate, you have a property manager that will call you and say, hey, this property was down this month or the cash flow wasn't as, uh, wasn't as, uh, as expected or we had a couple of turns and you have to replace a roof, which from my perspective gets really annoying, right? I'm five foot five, 130 pounds wet, right? Like I don't know how to replace the roof. That's not gonna happen. And I hate hard physical labor. Like it doesn't make sense. But a note, like I can lift pieces of paper, right? Like these are my, these, this is the extent of my bicep curl right here. That's, that's what I can do. Um, so from a, from a retirement perspective, long-term retirement perspective, it looks like notes uh, are a pretty good solution. Um, to be added uh, to the overall portfolio. Uh, question for you, how do I start the due diligence process in a note? Because that, I understand, is distinctly different than that of, say, a real estate rental. Sure. Uh, you want to look at the terms of the note. You know, what's the interest rate of the note? Uh, do, you, do you want to buy a 0.5% interest rate note? Well, if you do, you're, you're not going to pay a whole lot for it. Okay. Uh, so you... you you look at that. I, let me preface this by saying uh, that you, the, the yield you get when you invest in a note, or let's call it the interest rate you get when you invest in a note, uh, don't confuse that with the interest rate that's on the note. For example, if, if it's a 5% interest yes. rate note and you buy it, now if you buy it for the full balance, you're going to get 5%. Then it's the 5%. Yes. It's a 5% investment. But if you buy it for less than the full balance, your interest rate or your yield is going to be more than 5%. So help, me walk, you, help, help walk us through the mathematics on that. How does that work? Uh, well, let's, let's take an example that I'd like to use. Um, let's call Mr. Smith. He sold his house uh, and he seller financed a, a small note. Uh, let's, let's make the numbers $10,000. You know, most notes are much larger than that, but just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and he amortized it for 10 years. So it'll be fully paid off in 10 years. Uh, the buyer of the house, Mr. Jones uh, is, is his name, and he'll pay, it comes out to $132 a month uh, for the next 10 years. Uh, well, Abby approaches Mr. Smith, who's, Abby is a note investor. He approaches yeah. Mr. Smith and he says, uh, well, I'll pay you $8,000 cash for that $10,000 note. Well, Mr. Smith says, well, why should I take less for that note? And the note investor says, I am buying your risk, Mr. Smith, in that note. Anything can happen to uh, our, uh, Mr. Jones's life in the next 10 years. Yes. For some reason, he's not gonna, he, he may not be able to pay it. So I am buying that risk. And if he defaults, I'm going to have to go through the expense of foreclosure, et cetera, et cetera. So 
a lot of, lot of risk there. So uh, if you were the Mr. Uh, Smith who sold the house and took, did the seller financing and owns the note, would you rather have $8,000 now and not have to worry about uh, Mr. Jones sending you $132 every month and what you're going to do about it if he doesn't? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's how we we approach we approach it. So your, your question on due diligence as yes. well. Um, so you look at the face interest rate of the note, pay less for it. If it's, you know, if it's a 20% interest rate note, you're probably going to pay full price for that because you get 20% on your money. Uh, you look at the uh, payer. Uh, has he been, he or she have been uh, consistently good in their payments? Uh, so you're going to pay less if it's a brand new note because you don't know the track record of that payer. And you can't uh, you just take a verbal, yes, this person has been uh, consistent and paid on time. You need to actually see the proof that yeah. this person is paid on time. Okay, cool. You I need, just wanted to make sure. You need to trust but verify, as Ronald Reagan used to say. Absolutely. Uh, you need some paperwork to show, some bank statements showing the, the deposits every month or, or a, a note servicing company. If they've yeah. been servicing them, you need a, a testimony. From them. So what else do I need to know about the note? And then we'll get to the asset. And then I have one more question for you. Okay. Uh, you have to look at the property. What's the property uh, that is uh, securing the note? Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, uh, is it a nice single family house in a nice neighborhood in good condition? Uh, is it something less? Is it something other than that? Is it a commercial uh, property? Uh, and if you want to buy a note on a commercial property, you have to think, well, what am I going to do if I get, if I end up owning this commercial property? Do I want to, would I go out and buy this commercial property? Right. I look at it yeah, would I would I go out and buy whatever this note is collateralized by? And if I look at it and say, well, it's it's collateralized by a a, a factory, uh, what would I do with a factory? I don't know anything about factory, so I wouldn't buy the note. Uh, so that's I, I look at things like that. So you look at the paper, uh, yeah. you look at the property, and you look at the payer. The paper, the property, and the payer. So the three P's. The three there you P's. Go. I like it. Yeah. Last question for you, and then we got to wrap up. Um, where do I find these notes? Because I'm, I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm intrigued, and now I'm thinking, okay, this needs to be something that I take a little seriously. Outside of going to Amazon and buying your, and buying a financial calculator, which I have done already. I love financial calculators. Um, where do I find these? Are they just available on the open market? Do I, is there a specific search that I have to run on some secret website somewhere? Bill, spill the beans. Where do I find these things? Okay. Uh, there are quite a number of ways to find them. Uh, Think Realty, uh, one of the Think Realty companies is lo uh, loanmls.com, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that has notes uh, available on it, and I certainly highly recommend people look at that. Uh, there are ways to find notes through, for example, uh, start going to a real estate investors club in your area, okay. and you'll find people with notes for sale. Uh, talk what's the, to what's the conversation there, real quick, at, at the real estate investors club or or at the real estate investors meetup? Do I do I say hi? My name's Abby, and I'm looking for notes for sale. Or how, how do I position the question so I don't sound like a newbie? Exactly. Uh, I I would have uh, business cards printed up indicating that you buy notes. Okay. And make sure you distribute them. Okay. Uh, and depending on how comfortable you are in, in talking to people, talk with the leaders of the uh, real estate investment club and uh, see if you can make a short presentation to them uh, on the fact that you buy notes. Uh, you can make up flyers and ask for permission to, to have those just uh, you know, on the table uh, when smart. people check in. Yeah. That's and, super you know, smart. Different ways. So finding notes, we talked about due diligence, we talked about the industry, why uh, having notes in your portfolio contributes to a nice, rich uh, overall retirement plan. And I highly suggest, Think Realty Nation, that you check it out and have this become more of a part of your daily conversation instead of only your single family rentals, your, your flipping projects, and uh, some of the new construction development deals that you, that you all are doing out there. So keep your, uh, keep your mind sharp and keep looking out for notes. Bill, what's the best way to get in touch with you should we have any questions or just want to say hey? Yeah, I'm happy to uh, answer questions, uh, talk, chat with people. Uh, best way to reach me is go to papersourceonline.com and just click on the contact uh, tab and uh, uh, shoot me an email. We'll take it from there. Awesome, Bill. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Abby. You Always a pleasure. It. You got it. My pleasure. So a lot of what I've learned today is ensuring longevity. Right? You want wealth building by real estate and notes and always be learning. 
you know, something like this, something like notes, it's going to take a time, it's going to take some time to really figure out and really do the mathematics and learn the mathematics, right? Just as Bill said, a 5% interest rate doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a 5% yield. Okay, you can buy that note at a discount and your yield could shoot through the roof. It could be 15, 16, 17% a year, depending on how you structure it. And next time we have them on, we'll talk about partials, where you can sell a partial of the note and how that could also be a benefit. And then we'll dig a little deeper into some of these rules and regs. So we got to go to the next segment, get in touch, go to papersourceonline.com and get in touch with Bill and ask all the questions that you need about notes. See you in a second. This segment is brought to you by Narada Real Estate Investments, your premier source for cash flow investment property. Visit www.turnkeyrealestateinvestments.com. So I love doing book reviews and I love reading a lot. Generally, uh, I, I enjoy reading hard covers and soft covers. I haven't really um, gotten to Audible uh, just yet, but I probably plan to. I feel like then I can read 10 books a, uh, a week or something like this. But there's still something, there's still something good about holding uh, and, and reading through a book and flipping the pages and smelling the book too. Well, today I'm doing a book review on uh, Eddie Wilson's book, Time, Wealth, Purpose, How to Fulfill Your Life Goals Through Real Estate Investing. Uh, you want to purchase this book, you can do so on Amazon. Make sure that you um, get, it, get it signed as well. Make sure that Eddie uh, signs that book for you because then it'll be worth probably about a million bucks. But I think I, I've liked this book for a variety of reasons. One, uh, he talks about the three pillars that are most important to him uh, as titled on the book, Time, Wealth, and Purpose. And if you read the intro, there's one paragraph that I really, uh, that I really enjoyed reading, and it really helped me uh, to refocus uh, kind of my energy and what I was doing. I'd like to read a paragraph to you. Um, and he says, uh, quote, this is his introduct introductory chapter here, quote, I knew from an early age that I wanted to work hard and keep expenses down in my 20s and 30s in order to accumulate wealth so that my prime years, 40 to 60, could be used to make a larger impact on the world. I wanted freedom to fulfill my purpose. Between leading mul multiple organizations and raising a family, I have a full life and everything I do in life is in alignment with my goals. I'm ensuring that my most productive years are focused on, on what matters most. If I give serious thought to what I want to accomplish in life and then do my best to manage my time to that end, my life will be rewarding. I encourage you to think about your life and how you invest your time. You can accomplish remarkable things when you align yourself with this way of being and thinking. It's interesting to me how many times I've just sat down and thought about what I really wanted and that's really helped me to accelerate my path, whether it's investing in real estate and buying and holding property or flipping properties or buying mortgage notes uh, as we've learned today. And I think it's really understanding the purpose. What is the purpose of all of this? Why do you want to flip property? Why do you want to make money investing in real estate? There has to be a greater end goal here. And so I highly recommend you pick up uh, Eddie's book, Time, Wealth, Purpose, because it really helps to showcase what one can do uh, when you put your mind to it. And you can make sure to grab this on Amazon as well. It's a, great, it's a great read. You'll probably end up reading it about a couple of hours, but it has a lot of valuable lessons that any real estate investor at any age can really benefit from. We've all heard about solar panels being installed on homes in California. That's a new rule for all new construction homes. But do they really add that value? Well, some say that you do see a little bit of a value bump. On a recent article on thinkrealty.com, uh, there was a quote by Zillow Research. And Zillow says, quote, one, of the reasons, uh, one reason housing with solar energy systems sell for more than homes without them is because they can provide substantial future energy cost savings. For homeowners who know they consume a lot of power, and of course we do, right? Like we have 1,800 devices at home, and I have, I think, four devices myself. My wife has, I think, six. These future savings are worth spending a bit more money up front. Um, in the New York City metro area, however, solar paneled homes, uh, solar power homes, have a premium at 5.4%, which is equivalent to an extra 24, roughly $24,000 in value for the typical home. So, What's interesting to me about all of this is solar is the wave of the future, right? It's already here. If you want to minimize your overall cost, get solar panels. But it depends on the area. And of course, 
it also depends on how much extra cost you want out of your own pocket. That can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes for a lot of first time home buyers that don't have that kind of budget. So if you want to be smart, if you want to be planet friendly and green friendly, take a look at the solar panel option. I think it makes sense, especially if you're like, you know, like me and you're playing Nintendo Wii 10,000 hours a day, then of course you're going to need solar panels. All right, that being said, uh, that wraps up the show. If you've got any questions for us, get in touch. Go to thinkrealty.com. You can get in touch with me anywhere online on social media at Abi Golhar. I'm on an Instagram and the Facebook and the Snapchats and the Twitters and the LinkedIn's and all that everywhere at Abi Golhar. So make sure that you ask me your question and I'll answer it right here on the Think Realty podcast. Um, today's podcast is brought to you by Runner's Warehouse, uh, the one of the largest, fastest growing, and the highest reviewed property management companies in America. Think Realty Nation, that's the show. Have questions again, feel free to reach out. We're here for you anytime, anywhere to answer your questions so you can build wealth with real estate. Until next time, happy investing.